Hello viewers, have you recently noticed that your car's engine temperature sits higher than usual? Or even worse, your car has overheated with steam billowing from under the hood. Either way, this clearly indicates something's wrong with its cooling system and ignoring the problem can quickly lead to expensive repairs. So to avoid that from happening, let's see what might cause the car to overheat. Engine overheating can be caused by anything from a clogged radiator or broken fan, worn water pump or stuck thermostat to issues with sensors or relays. But it can also be something as simple as low coolant level or a bad expansion tank cap. So let's go through each of these in no particular order. The first thing you want to check when the car is running hot is the coolant level. If there isn't enough of it, it won't be able to sufficiently cool down the engine. In most vehicles, there is a coolant tank with min and max markings on its side and you want the level to be between the two. If it's below minimum, you should top it up with a 50-50 mixture of coolant and distilled water. And of course, keep an eye on the coolant's level in the following weeks. If it drops again, there is a leak somewhere you'll have to trace down and fix. While at it, you should also check the coolant tank cap. If broken, it won't hold the pressure inside the cooling system, which in most cars can go up to 15 psi, causing the coolant to slowly evaporate or even leak out when the engine reaches its running temperature. Moving along to the very front of the car. Here you'll find a radiator whose job is to cool down the hot coolant coming from the engine. What can happen here is that the radiator's surface gets covered with dirt or that these thin metal cooling fins break off, which reduces its cooling capacity. The same goes if the radiator is clogged from the inside, which usually happens when tap water is used instead of coolant, as it has lots of lime. Next, sitting behind the radiator is the fan, which provides additional airflow when the vehicle is stationary or moving slowly. In many cars, this fan is powered by an electric motor, whose operation is controlled by the ECU based on the engine's temperature. And if the motor fails, or the ECU doesn't engage it for any reason, the fan will not rotate in conditions when additional airflow through the radiator is needed, causing overheating. Some vehicles, however, have a fan powered directly by the engine through a so-called viscose coupling, which is filled with oil, and if it leaks out, the fan will not kick in when it should, with predictable consequences. Then we have another vital component of the car's cooling system, the water pump. Its job is to circulate the coolant between the engine and radiator, but if the pump fails, in most cases these fins wear out or even fall apart, especially if they are made out of plastic, there won't be sufficient flow to cool down the engine, which might be most prominent under hard loads, such as when driving on a highway or towing a trailer. What I must mention here is the thermostat, which regulates the coolant flow through the engine and keeps it at optimal temperature. Despite generally being simple in design, thermostats can get stuck or partially stuck in a certain position, which prevents them from performing their job. If it's stuck open, the engine will struggle to reach its operating temperature and you might notice your car's gas mileage is down. It's far more dangerous, however, if the thermostat remains stuck in a closed position, as this prevents the coolant flow and causes the engine to overheat quickly regardless of driving condition. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the car's ECU relies on coolant temperature sensors readings to assess the engine's temperature and trigger the cooling fan when needed. But if this sensor is giving false readings, saying the coolant is much colder than it actually is, you may end up with an overheating engine. It's much the same with this relay here, which engages the radiator fan when the ECU tells it to do so. Lastly, I must point out that your car might be running hot or even overheat simply because you're pushing it too hard. For instance, maybe you fully loaded its trunk, hitched up a trailer, 
and are trying to scale a long uphill climb while driving fast. This can put too much strain on the engine and consequently its cooling system, which simply can't cope with all that excess heat. So in such situations, my advice would be to ease off the throttle and, in the future, consider not loading up your car with so much luggage. With the cooling system having so many components, determining which one is to blame for engine overheating might not be an easy job. Sure, checking the coolant level is easy, but everything else might require deeper analysis. What I suggest here is to observe closely what happens with the car's running temperature while driving. If the temperature only goes up while driving slowly or sitting in a traffic jam, but remains within acceptable range when driving at speed, it's most likely that the fan is not kicking in for some reason. You can easily check this by leaving your car to idle with the hood up. When the temperature gauge reaches the upper portion of its scale, the fan should start spinning. If it doesn't, I suggest checking the video on how to diagnose a broken radiator fan we have here on this channel. Now on the other hand, if your car's temperature is ok when driving moderately, but goes up when pushing it hard, driving on the highway, long uphills or towing, this usually means the cooling system isn't efficient enough. This might be because of a clogged radiator a worn pump or a partially stuck thermostat. To narrow down the problem, you can measure the temperature on the radiator's inlet and outlet hoses using an infrared thermometer. With the engine running and fully warmed up, the difference between the two should be at least 15 degrees and anything considerably less indicates a clogged radiator. At this point, you should consider flushing the cooling system as this might help solve the issue. However, if the previous test reveals the radiator is performing well, all that's left are the thermostat, assuming it's partially stuck, and the water pump. Now, in such a situation, I'd give it a shot at replacing the thermostat, as it's much cheaper and easier to do. If that doesn't help, it's almost certain the water pump is worn and needs to be replaced. Lastly, if the thermostat is stuck in a closed position, this will cause the car to overheat in all conditions. The simple way to check is start the car and leave it running until the temperature gauge reaches halfway up. At this point, put your hand on both radiator hoses, upper and lower. If they are cold, there is no flow, meaning the thermostat is not opening. In the end, let's go over the repair costs for each of these potential problems. And because the figures can vary a lot depending on your car's make and model, I'll give you some rough estimates. For instance, replacing the radiator can set you back anywhere between $200 and $700, while the fan is usually somewhat cheaper, with prices ranging from $150 to $400. Thermostats usually aren't expensive, and you can expect to pay around 50 bucks for a new one. Now, as for the water pump, its replacement cost depends a lot on its configuration. If it's an external one, driven by an auxiliary belt, you might expect to pay up to $200 to get new one fitted. But if it's integrated into the camshaft drive, you'll have to replace the whole timing belt as well, which is far more expensive. On the other hand, coolant temperature sensors or various relays are much cheaper, usually less than 50 bucks, and replacing them is in most cases a simple job you can easily do on your own. So that would be all about the engine overheating. What might be causing it, how to diagnose the problem, and how much it might cost to repair the issue. I hope this video was helpful and if so, don't forget to hit that like button and share it with your friends. On the other hand, if you're having some different issues with your car, be sure to check other videos here or visit our site mechanicbase.com for detailed automotive repair guides. Bye!